Uh, my name is Felix yep. Wang. I am a UX designer at Google, and more recently I transitioned onto the Google Design Relations team, where most of what our team does is to support the design and developer community to build good products using Google's technology and methodology. First time, it was actually my first week at Google. Um, my manager told me that they're all going to San Francisco from New York for this sprint week thing. And I had the option of either waiting a week to start or just starting right away and doing this weird sprint week thing. And that was my first experience with design sprints. It was crazy. <laughs> I can't think of any better word to describe it, but uh, we had like 30, 40 teams all in one location, sprinting on various different topics. I felt really intimidated by the whole process. Being my first week, first exposure to this weird design sprint fancy stuff, and um, I thought that it was the way Google operates, and I just walked away being really impressed by um, the degree of collaboration, um, how the team was able to condense down the design process in a matter of days, and um, it was a very good onboarding experience to, to Google, and I would like to think that it colored the way I um, operate as a designer. Because of my experience, I, after that I tried to find opportunities to um, polish my facilitation skills and I was fortunate enough to be trained as either the first or, first or second batch of Sprint Masters internally. Yeah, so I took the training, I learned all about the Google Design Sprint methodology and then very shortly afterwards I my manager gave me a project for me to do it. I pitched using a design sprint and um, just started facilitating from there. Yeah. There's a lot of different teams at Google, so I cannot speak to everybody. Um, but from what we see, teams are using it for a bunch of different ways. One is to kick, up, kick start a product or feature development, using it at the very beginning to um, drive alignment. Uh, we've also seen parts where um, people use it in a more experimental fashion, like maybe uh, before dedicating lots of resources into doing something that we're not sure of, let's run a design sprint to quickly validate and see if it makes sense. Uh, we've also seen teams using design sprints to design a new process um, or a new way of just collaborating. Like it gets really meta that way, um, but that's all to say different teams are using design sprints in different ways and everything ranging from product feature design to um, best practices and processes, things like that. I've been very impressed by the, the different forms that design sprints have uh, that taken over the past couple of years is seeing how um, people both inside and outside of Google are using and implementing it and I think depending on your company, depending on your location, depending on uh, what type of product you're doing, what type of sprint you're running, you're starting to see a lot of nuances being introduced into the standard quote-unquote um, design sprint process and I think it's very exciting, it's really hopeful. I'm really curious to see what other shape in life this methodology will, will, will take with you know, coming to Melbourne, seeing how the community here is working with it. I'm really excited to discover, not discover is the wrong word, but I'm really excited to learn how cultural nuances, how different work cultures, um, how that influences the way people use this methodology and if there are any adjustments um, facilitators might take to make it work better for not only their company culture but maybe their the corporate culture overall in certain locations. 
it's not a one size fits all when it comes to how you innovate. And it's always a learning experience for me when you hear case studies, when you hear how other people um, apply or adjust or make, you know, pivot or make changes to uh, the existing process. And I feel like in the past, uh, you know, three or four years ago, um, when you're doing design sprints, there might still be a UX um, user experience education component to it because you want to bring people in and you want to explain how to do stuff. But now that we seem to get over this hump now, UX is a discipline that resonates more and more. Uh, you don't necessarily have to do that much education within the sprint context. So what can you do with that extra time? Um, and that's the part that I'm really, really excited to see over the next couple of years, how that impacts the way we look at this discipline and the way we use this um, process. The best advice I can give you is things will definitely go wrong. You can do as much preparation as you want, you can write out all of the timestamps, you can plan out the full agenda, but things will most definitely go wrong. And you just have to embrace it. You have to be comfortable being weird about things. You have to be comfortable pivoting. You have to be comfortable being uncomfortable. Um, and don't be too precious about the agenda that you put together. Um, so yeah, things will definitely go wrong. The agenda will change. And as a first time facilitator, make sure you build some time and space and flexibility to prepare for that. My favorite part of a design sprint is as a facilitator, when you set the ground rules and you let people go wild um, and you start seeing, um, there's always a point in the sprint where things just start gelling. It's never when you expect it to be. It's never the way you expect it to be, but there's always that point where just all of a sudden things fall into place, the gears are working well, and people just start having fun. And I think that's the part that I'm always looking forward to. Um, and that's my favorite part of a design sprint. Borrowing lessons from um, other industries, other products, and then seeing how those lessons can be applied to the problem and product and challenge that you're trying to solve. If you're more junior, people tend to equate like being innovative to like being original or coming up with a, a new idea, right? Uh, when most of the time it's not that hard, right? It's just about um, wording things in a different way, um, looking at things under a different lens, and um, yeah, start there. At Google, we've been working with a lot of um, meetups all over the world, and we were starting to notice certain patterns or questions that consistently pop up. And so one of the things that the design relations team is really excited to work on is to connect these global communities and then see if we can find some common challenges, address common challenges, answer common questions, and then um, allow uh, communities to build on top of each other's experiences. And so the Design Sprint Global Community is our first step to that, where we're working with existing uh, meetup groups that are doing really interesting work, um, the one in Melbourne here, for example, and just being that bridge and connecting people so that if, uh, a meetup group in Melbourne might face similar challenges with a group in Paris, and then how can we make that connection? How can we start that conversation? Um, so that's what the Design Sprint Global Community is. Hey, global, commu commu community, global, global community. <laughs>